Well, good morning, everyone. Um, to start with, um, please let me say thank you. Um, thank you to Mr. Gergman for the positive opening of this Congress and uh, your good job here in this country, Slovenia. Thank you all for coming together and your motivation to work for or with hemp. And last, last but not least, um, thank you, Maja, for organizing and for bringing us all together again. And thank you. It is my pleasure and my honor to present you the latest news, status, reports, and information from uh, EAHA, the European Industrial Hemp Association. As you will see, a lot of positive developments have taken place and our all association is bigger and stronger than ever. And thank you for the newest information regarding the 500 hectares. We didn't even have that data yet from Slovenia. Here on this slide, you can, you have a couple of informations all together. First of all, definitely with this information from Mr. Gergman now, that we have uh, 500 hectares just in Slovenia, um, we can be very, very sure that we have more than 220,000 uh, hectares uh, all over Europe in 2015, which is the largest acreage or largest uh, um, hectare uh, number of the last 60 years. The European Industrial Hemp Association has 13 regular members and 114 associate members from 37 countries in 2015, which is also a record. Here you can see the stable growing member numbers of members. Uh, most of them are, of course, from Germany and now meanwhile also France, but also all other countries, also the smaller countries in Europe, are gaining importance uh, for um, the association and for the hemp business in general. Oh, by the way, our cooperation, yeah, I was just wondering what name this, is of course with Interchange in France, the Hemp Industry Association US, Canadian Hemp Trade Alliance Canada, and the International Hemp Building Association and I very good cooperation with meanwhile that built together in the last years. Here you can see a chart that shows the hectares, hectare development in the last years. And as you can see, it already shows a stable growth of the last year since 2012, 2013. Um, from everything that uh, we hear um, it's pretty uh, likely that this trend will go on in the next years. And as I said, this is the this total acreage is the largest that we have in Europe since 60 years. Uh, I just want to show you a little bit, um, a couple of pages from our leaflet that we. Uh, print and distribute to all our members whenever you want to have this kind of leaflet to show it into your, in your countries, to show it to the industry, to show it to, show it to politicians. Um, you just write an email and you will get copies of that. Uh, it, it's, it's available on the website in a PDF version, but of course also possible to get it in a print version. It shows all the uh, products, probably not all the products, but the main products that can be produced and made from hemp. Uh, for example, now here are the fibers. I get back to this uh, topic later on. And also, also the possibilities for uh, using those fibers in um, the uh, natural fiber uh, um, associated um, products in the car industry, etc. And uh, I don't know whether you can read it from there, but uh, when it comes to global warming, uh, which is one of the biggest issues we have to worry and we have to uh, 
uh, care about in the upcoming years, you can see that hemp fiber compared to glass fiber has an immense uh, positive um, influence on the CO2 um, and the CO2 uh, uh, carbon footprint. This is, for example, some of the information that we put into the leaflet to show it to the industry. Here you can see, this is not in the leaflet, but this is information that I think is very important for everybody who is starting to do hemp business for fibers. Uh, the prices are growing, which is normally good for everybody who is offering fibers or who is doing the business with fibers or for fibers. But you can see that it's still a lot less than the prices for flex fibers. So hemp fibers are very competitive right now in the world market. As you can see here, um, the KNAF and hemp fibers were the clear winners of everything that developed in the fiber industry, especially for the European automotive industry. Uh, from 2005 to 2012, you can compare the numbers and hemp is definitely among the winners in the, the overall market for all fibers that are used for composite, composites. Composites. This is just a, a little uh, summary of um, what kind of numbers we are talking about when it comes to the automotive interior parts. You see a total amount of 150,000 tons are getting used in the EU and the fiber from this is 80,000 <coughs> Or the part that is used by from fibers is 80,000 tons. So there's a there's a huge market for fibers such as wood, cotton, flax, kinga, but even also hemp. And uh, more and more important for the European automotive industry, but also other industries, is to use fibers that are actually grown in Europe, because then also the carbon footprint is a lot better than to import the fibers from India, for example, or from Asia. Um, on the other way, of course, also those countries need their fibers more and more. Uh, we, we know that from India and also from, from China that fibers are getting uh, short there because their growing economy and their growing production uh, need, this, need those um, fibers themselves. So sometimes, uh, for crazy reason, um, they are importing our fibers while we are importing their fibers. And, uh, well, that, but that's what we're calling it. There are just as example two very uh, interesting developments right now in the on the fiber side uh, from him. Uh, one is that uh, this material um, is invented in France for automotive parts. Um, it's um, for automotive performance material, and it already is um, proved that the weight saving is up to 20% while it has an equivalent performance uh, even with 25% longer life cycle. So this is one of the products that gives hope that hemp fiber will get more and more into the uh, regular automotive industry. Second example is the high HIV Trim part solutions, uh, GmbH in Germany. Uh, they also won second place on the um, uh, in innovation uh, prize. Uh, it's very interesting because those long hemp fiber mixture with the PP can be used for interior. Uh, has a nice design, as you can see. You can imagine this as a as a cockpit in the car or as a door panel, so you don't have to cover. The, the, the fibers anymore, but you just show the fibers as they are for very trendy cars, maybe a little bit in the carbon look kind of style, and um, it has a very uh, extraordinary appearance due to the long fibers that are inside the material. The current leaflet is a bit too small to show the new, or well, kind of new, big issue on big topic of CBD and other cannabinoids. So um, we just had to kind of press it in, in this current um, version of the leaflet. Uh, you can see the text down here. I will get back to this later so you can 
just read it uh, shortly on the, on the screen. But of course, it actually is already in the paper that there is um, the issue of uh, pharmaceutical uh, products made from hemp too. Those next pages are the ones that we are presenting on the hemp food. And uh, as I said before, it gives a nice overview, this leaflet, on all applications that are done from hemp. And this is the text on the CBD. So um, EIHA also supports any um, process on that area to give the farmers additional value on the hemp of the, for the hemp fields, but also to uh, show the industry that there is more on a lot more on um, hemp than just the THC. Uh, the twelfth conference this year in uh, in May was a very very big success. Uh, we had some more records that were set. I will show you now. We had a record participation. 257 participants uh, came to Hurt, which is close to Cologne, um, from 38 different countries all around the world. And uh, please be so kind and save the date of the next conference, which will be not in, uh, not in May, but in June next year. Uh, it will be the 13th conference. And uh, you'll find all the information on our almost completely new style web website, uh, which is uh, online since December. And uh, by the way, for all members, uh, even also for the associate members, uh, all the database with former presentations of all the last year's reports on hemp and hemp data from all over the world is uh, free, free to access so that you have um, everything available, whatever you need for your own research. So, um, last but definitely not least, please join um, EAH, EAHA uh, as a member. Um, strengthen our all European Industrial Hemp Association by that. And uh, for any question, please feel free to contact me today um, during the Congress. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. I have the first question. We saw yes. the date, but we didn't know where is the place. Oh, again, it will be in Hurt in Cologne, but you will have it on the website. It's also with the uh, exact address and also how to get there, and they, they can register for the conference. Thank you very much. If you have some questions. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, There's some questions here. Good, sir. Daniel, you, you know me already. Um, I'm Todd. Hi, Todd. <laughs> Thanks. I was wondering if uh, is there any initiatives being pushed forward by EIHA through the European Union to promote educational cooperation across borders within Europe that would basically uh, you know involve local farmers, uh, educational institutions that could study uh, the growth processes. Uh, or, or potentially, one thing we haven't really discussed a whole lot is uh, the building potential for hemp and hempcrete. Uh, studying, you know, how to actually build a home out of hempcrete. Study uh, the energy that you would either consume or save using hempcrete and things of that nature. I think that's a you have a unique opportunity here in Europe, specifically with so many growers from so many locations to do that. Um, thanks, Dot. Uh, when I if I got it right, there were a couple of questions in one. Yeah, sorry. Um, no problem. I, I start at the end. Um, well, through our cooperation with the International Hemp Building Association, um, there is a lot of um, help for people that are interested, or also the industry that is interested in building uh, with hemp, uh, hemp shives, hemp concrete, whatever. Um, this this kind of cooperation actually we really got to life in the last years um, so it's more and more helpful to have those associations working together of course 
and uh, what we do is um, whenever there are questions coming in by emails for, on whatever topic uh, regarding him, we um, give this. We, all those questions get into uh, an email that is sent out to all, all the members, whether it's a regular member or associate member. Any member of EAHA gets this, this kind of question from all over the world. So whatever company, whatever kind of association, whatever kind of group or interest group or whatever is member will get the question and can either answer the question or help with the product or give a price, a quotation or whatever. So it actually works pretty good, that system. Um, regarding the educational program, I think it's a great idea. I think it is a good idea to, to start working on that. Uh, one, of, one of my intentions, and I know that some people in Europe already start that, and also already there are some publications, is to actually try to focus all the information on how to grow hemp into a booklet. And not, 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 a, not a very thick book, because farmers have other things to do than, than to read, at least during the day, because they have to grow hemp. But like a booklet, and then you have to differentiate between the different countries, the different regions, the different climates, and all that. But this is, I think, the, the next step for the upcoming years. Thank you. I have a question regarding the TLC content in industrial hemp. Because here in Slovenia at the moment we are having a lot of discussion and there are a lot of suggestions to increase the level of THC content in industrial hemp. But according to my knowledge, which is, uh, let's say, limited, but as far as I know, industrial hemp across the Europe, and that's very strict regulation, because even, let's say, phenola was taken off the list a couple of years ago. And it was put back on the list two years ago, I think. And even in Canada, the THC content in industrial hemp is 0.3%. But in Slovenia, there's a lot of discussion that this is not a good, that this is just an administrative number. And I, my question is, are you receiving any proposals from your members to increase the THC content in industrial hemp? Because, like I said before, my knowledge is limited, but I see no point in increasing THC content in industrial hemp. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you for that question. It's very interesting, very good question, and one of the probably most important issues in the next years. Um, I will give you two answers. One is, and I start with that, but the official answer from the association. Um, there are definitely inquiries, there are definitely a lot of questions on that topic um, that are uh, that we get asked or that we um, get uh, uh, confronted with. Um, officially, we, we know that it will be very, very difficult on an all-European level through Brussels to raise the THC level again. From it, it was brought down through French, uh, let's say, politician uh, uh, <laughs> trying to find the diplomatic word. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was brought down uh, to, to actually protect the, the French uh, varieties, uh, which are fiber varieties, and fiber varieties normally have a lower GHC level than seed varieties, for example, especially when it comes to the exact point of testing on the field because that is different between the varieties for fibers and the varieties for, for the THC levels in the different timing are different between those two varieties. Um, we, as the association, accept the limit or the level as it is in the legislation right now of 0.2%. Although we know from Canada, 0.3 works perfectly, and it was 0.3 in Europe before. Now I give you my second answer. The second answer, as me personally, and as the uh, founder and CEO of Hemp for International, working or doing most of our sales with food seeds, food raw material. Um, I don't like the current legislation at all. I think 0.2 is too low. The 0.3 makes a lot more sense. 
is more reasonable and a lot more very high quality seed varieties that we have in Europe, especially in the southern and eastern part of Europe, would be available to the market, would be available to the farmer if we had the old 0.3 level. Uh, I'm, I'm not a ham fan uh, fanatic that I, I don't care about the GHC level. Yeah? I, don't, I don't think that we need 0 0.4, 0 0.5. We're not talking about medical marijuana here, we're talking about industrial hemp. But seed varieties have a disadvantage when it comes to the testing methods that are used right now. And to avoid these disadvantages, the level should be increased to 0.3% again. <coughs> it's far away from medical marijuana, it's far away from being a drug, but it gives a lot of varieties, as I said, especially Eastern European varieties, a chance on the market to be uh, uh, available as soy seeds again. And that would definitely help our food market, our hemp food market in Europe. Hi, um, I'm from the UK. Um, my question is, um, I've got the somewhat unfortunate advantage of my um, being under the new government, which is the old one as well, which is very pro-GM um, and also very pro-facking as well, which is somewhat, um, unfortunately, is probably very anti-hemp as well. And I had attended the conference, which was, which was held by the Institute of Minerals and Mining, uh, in, the, in the International Year of Natural Fibers a few years ago where I've met some of your colleagues. Um, and they were discussing then how to take forward hemp and other natural fibers as well. Um, that was five years ago, 2015 now. And how would you, there was a question which was just asked about education of hemp farming. I think that considering the amount of money that does go through the square mile in London, um, which is a heck of a lot of money, and how much influence there is in the UK. Um, but that influence goes in the wrong direction. Um, I think that we need the education a lot more, um, and how to actually put it through considering we are probably the only country in Europe. Even Scotland has decided to go anti-GM. How do we actually get something moving on organic first, and then bringing the hemp second? Well, as with any um, issue, it's all about lobbying and all about being as uh, strong and big as possible. That's why so many bad things probably happen in the world because there are so many people in it. Well, those kind of industries are so big and powerful still mm -hmm. until today. Um, you, you bigger and more powerful the hemp industry or also the organic market. Uh, and other green um, renewable uh, markets uh, will grow, the more this kind of power will also shift. And I think we can see some, some positive effects already. Um, the organic market is very strong and market is growing. Uh, there are a lot of positive influences, positive developments, but in the end it always comes down to lobbying. And do you have any is anyone from um, UK government, DEFRA, anyone been in communication with you? Most likely not, no. no. We, we try to do our work in Brussels, yes. yes. And there are meetings here and there, but of course it's a very, very small subject yes. to them compared to all other subjects. Thank you. Hi. Um, I had a question about um, the CBD that you talked um, and do you have plans as an association to lobby for wider acceptance across Europe? Um, that's one question. And um, assuming that this trend will, will go on, do you have plans for quality control assessment of what is, you know, an acceptable product in that sector? Yeah. Is, is that a countdown? Is that a bomb? Thank you. Um, can, can you, can you, you just repeat the first short of the question? Come. Because it, it belongs to the yes, second part, so then I don't know. Do you have plans to, um, to lobby, <laughs> as you said, um, for a wider acceptance of 
wider acceptance of CBD across Europe, maybe homogenizing legislation. Uh, wi wider acceptance of CBD? Of CBD uh, of as a food supplement, okay. as a pharmaceutical. Um, and if, if this is an actual plan, and if you expect that trend, do you have um, issues on quality control and how, how to regulate this, what is an acceptable product, what is not? Yeah, um, yes, definitely is already um, an issue for EIHA. Um, we are very open-minded uh, to pharmaceuticals. Actually, in our statutes, a couple of years ago, pharmaceuticals were already um, noted as one of the topics, one of the products that can be produced from hemp. Um, still, CBD, any other cannabinoids than GHC, uh, are, is a very related to association work, related to lobbying, related to Bristol, is a very new topic. Um, some of you guys, also me, some other people in the market already work with CBD for a couple of years. Yeah? Maybe there are also US companies that already do it for three, four, five years. Yeah? But in relation to association work, it's just the first second. So we still have to find out everything. Who do we have to talk to? What are the rules? What are the legislation on, for example, nutritional uh, or nutraceutical um, to, to get it as a nutraceutical uh, uh, registered. Um, there are some countries that are, are very progressive, are very actually fast on this. For example, Czech Republic. Yeah? Um, probably also here. Uh, I know. I know Poland is very, very uh, much moving forward to that. Germany is very slow. That's it's always the same. Yeah? It's very slow. Um, of course, the other, other developments will help. Hopefully, the German authorities to um, to have to have there to take their the right decisions uh, on the, the same directions. But then again, we are still all in Europe, and then again, it has to be somehow handled by Brussels. And maybe they overrule all the other countries' decisions, or maybe they they, they get influenced by them. So it probably will be, I think something for the next three to five years to find, um, to work for it, to fight for it, to, to stand up for it, but also to accept that they will be most likely the same as in every business, two steps forward, one step back. I mean, I understand that the time structure means the plans to work in that direction. Um, yes, yes and no. As an association, we cannot rule the market. You know, the market rules itself. Uh, we, we can assist. We can help, we can provide information, and we can do the lobbying. The, when it gets to quality control, for example, we can advise, but it, it's not our job, and it should not be our job, to set the quality control itself. The market being so young, it has to start from somewhere. Yeah. We, we definitely offer a platform. Um, I mean, you saw the numbers. Um, I, I personally say from those 257 participants, at least 50 to 80, probably even 100, were there because of the new market for pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals coming from the CBD or cannabinoids uh, topic. That, I mean, there, there, there are the fibers, it's a stable market growing now, there, there is a seed and the food, and it's very much growing as, a, as I know myself. But then now on top of that comes a third market that kind of combines again hemp, industrial hemp, and medical marijuana and sits in between. So there is a lot there are a lot of discussions, a lot of great yeah. yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for your answer. I think you already answered to my question. I just wanted to to talk about the C B D uh, as a food supplement. So the, this industry or this market is just new and begins in Europe. Uh, we can see in the United States that there is lots of edible food brands using THT or CBD. Uh, what about that in Europe? Is it legal to, to make edibles and sell it right now? Or we need one to five years to develop the market? So I, I just don't know what the laws uh, what the, the laws say in Europe about um, uh, CBD as food supplement. Thank you. Thank you. Frankly spoken, I can answer. <laughs> um, not, not, uh, not as a person, not as a member of the board. Um, the, uh, 
I, I can try to give you a little bit um, information. The thing is, uh, why in the, the basic rule is in, in the US everything is legal that is not illegal. And in Europe it's vice versa, at least in Germany. Everything is illegal that is not legal when it comes to nutraceuticals or, um, or edibles. Yeah? So uh, to have uh, a substance like CBD in a, in a, in a um, nutrition, uh, nutritional supplement, you have to have it on the list register. And this, I think, started in Czech Republic now, yeah? but it, it's not EU law. So um, uh, even if good friends of mine declare it as a legal product, it might be legal in Czech Republic, but we don't know yet whether it's legal also on the other side of the border, whether it's shipped to Germany or France or Italy. It's, it's as, I, as I said before, it's the first second of this whole market. And you, you, you gave a good, I think you gave a good timeline, one to five years, that's what I expect. Um, that will need the market to establish on the one side, but also need the regulations to come and, and cover or uh, kind of base the market. I have a question for you. We yes. have European Union. Mm -hmm. Why don't we have the same rules? It's a very good question. I wonder about that every time when I drive to Brussels. We have some good lobbyists, I would say. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you already asked something. Would you like to ask some more questions? Well, just quick. Okay, quick. We have coffee break. Uh, we passed uh, 11. Uh, and the thing I think is that uh, Tuesday can answer if he's. I'm still capable with the light, yes, so not yes, nice yes. enough. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that remark. Yes. I'm still alive. Okay, um, you've got these climate change negotiations up in um, Paris, I think in a few months, left from every year. And I've always wondered, in the scheme of things, when we are here talking about health and the benefits and the industrial and the climate change and everything, is there anyone? Has ever been or going to have any representatives going to the negotiations and actually saying something worthwhile and actually has got something credible to say as a solution for these kind of things, negotiations with regards to health perspective? Um, I don't know exactly whether something or somebody will um, hold on, hold, hold up the, the hemp flag at this kind of. Um, convention there. Uh, sometimes you have to be invited formally, uh, officially, to this kind of uh, convention or to any kind of conference. Um, I, I just know that Itashovo is doing a good job. More focus on fiber, yes, than on seeds, but seeds or hemp uh, food stuff is getting more and more important in France too. Um, so I would expect that they, if it's in France, then they will be and, and they can attend to the uh, conference or to the convention, then they will be there. But uh, it's, it's a good idea. So if, if, if you have, if anybody of you has any kind of date or any kind of uh, um, thing that is happening, at least in Europe, send us an email so you know, to draw our attention on that. To the DHC level is uh, when is the harvest is when we get the harvest if we get a different variety that with a higher THC and we can manipulate it to harvest it before it gets to over above uh, 0 0.2. This allowed from the beginning the seeds should be under 0 0.2 percent of THC. Um, as far as I as far as I know, you can only grow. Well, actually, I, we would have to read the text. Word by word, um, the certified seeds, of course, the ones that are on the list, yes. Um, I think for others, it depends on what is the THC content at point of test, not harvest, but point of testing. Uh, I think it is a way to bring, in new, um, to bring in new varieties onto the list. If you can prove that the variety that you are growing has 0.2% or less at the point of testing, you can apply for having that variety on the list, on the official list. For all the varieties that are on the list already, 
they are officially uh, tested for yeah. as and, seat. Uh, and how is the process to certify the seats? The, it probably depends from country to country, but I, I know that there are no, some here in Europe. There is nothing in Spain to certify. We are in Spain now, yeah. and there is no way to certify. We are working as well with a high CBD seats. With a, at the moment we are just in one THC, but we try to get it to the lowest level, 0 0.2, with 20% CBD and with a 1, 1 to 34 radius. Okay. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly. I have to ask that question regarding what is the paperwork, what is the bureaucratic way to actually get the variety uh, stated as certified, or well, get it certified. But I'm very sure there are people in here that do this kind of, um, uh, or already learned how to do it. So I can connect you during the coffee break. Okay, perfect. Huh? Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I think